Good morning or good afternoon, whatever you are in the world. My name is Dr. Alberto Rulan with Performance Equine Veterinary Services, my assistant Annalyn, and our horse Jack. Today, we are going to talk about the purpose of the lameness exam and how we do a lameness examination. Basically, a lameness exam is a way for us to find out where a horse could be showing signs of poor performance due to musculoskeletal issues or due to lameness or limping, right? Or cloud, claudication. So I like to do a systematic approach and you're gonna follow me with a systematic approach. Hopefully, you learn something from it, all right? So a very important part of the lameness exam that sometimes we oversee is to look at the whole horse from top to bottom. And in my system, I like to look at the horse from this side. I go around the horse, right? Then we're gonna see the horse walking. Then we're gonna see the horse trotting or jogging. Then we are going to see the horse in a circle. In his head, we're gonna look at his ears, look at his eyes. I like to look how symmetric his eyes are because the nervous system also affects lameness. So if a horse has problem with a nerve, might show, it might show as a lameness. I look at his teeth, it's important that the horse's teeth are well filed, all right? The TMJ right here, temporomandibular joint. I feel both of them, very important. I open the mouth and I'm looking for the occlusion because of course we are going to put a bit on the horse. So if the mouth is not good, we're gonna have problems with that. Then some people do it a different way and that's okay. Some people look at the feet first, then upper body, then the head. There's not a specific standard among veterinarians as long as everything is covered, all right? Now I start looking, palpating, looking and palpating from right here behind the ear. We have the cervical vertebra. And I'm start palpating the vertebra. I start palpating what we call the vertebral processes, all right? And the muscles that connect. So I'm going to palpate on the cervical vertebra right here behind the ear. There are multiple vertebra that I'm going to follow, of course. The cervical vertebra, and I'm gonna, I'm, we're not gonna spend a lot of time talking about the specific anatomy of the muscles, but just to name a few, we're gonna have, we're gonna have the um, brachiocephalicus muscle, we're gonna have the clitomastoideus muscle, we we'll have multiple muscles in the neck, all right? I also look at the jugular vein because it's important to know if the veins and arteries are working good, all right? Now here, I'm gonna look at the shoulder. We call this the point of the shoulder. So I am going to have a feel for the shoulder. Right here is the point of the shoulder, right here is the scapula. The shoulder has the supraspinatus muscle, the infraspinatus muscle. There are some other muscles here like the deltoideus, the triceps. All these muscles I'm palpating for irregularities or hardiness, right? This is called the antebrachium. I'm gonna feel the antebrachium. These are the extensor muscles. I'm going to feel here the forearm, right here the forearm, right? And this is the knee, cannon bone. I'm looking for bumps in the cannon bone or pain. And I'm looking for, I'm gonna feel both, the front part, cannon bone, fedlock, pastern. And I'm gonna look also at the hind part or the caudal part, like we call it, the flexor muscles. So extensor muscles, flexor muscles. Right here are the flexor tendons, right? We have the superficial digital flexor tendon, the deep digital flexor tendon. We have the suspensory branches. Then I'm gonna palpate all this. I'm gonna flex the knee, and I'm gonna put my fingers in the carpal area, in the carpus or the knee, same thing. And I'm gonna palpate on the inside. I'm gonna palpate between the flexor tendons and the cannon bone. That's where the suspensory ligament is. And on the outside, I'm gonna pop it with my thumb over here. Then I'm gonna test, I'm gonna test the flexibility of the knee. I'm also going to test the flexibility of the fedlock and lower limb. Right here, when I flex the lower, I'm flexing the fedlock, the pastern, and the coughing joint. However, 
most of the flexion is gonna happen on the femur. Then I'm gonna turn around and I am going to request for the hoof tester and I am going to hoof test the heels right here, the inside of the hoof, the toe. Now the outside, that's here, and the heel. Then I'm gonna open wide and I'm gonna test right here at the frog. Another way that I can do is I put it between my legs. I'm gonna make the horse comfortable and I'm going to test with my two hands right here on the frog, right here. And another test is gonna be right here. One of the key aspects is right here, make sure I don't test and touch the coronary band because if I touch the coronary band, that's very sensitive and he's not gonna like. So I press looking for sensitivity over the navicular area. So now, obviously I give him the feedback. I look at the quality of the foot. Then you see how I am palpating. I'm always touching the horse. I like to feel the muscles. I like to feel the skin and the flexibility of the horse. Now, as I come back, I look at this called the epaxial muscles. I'm looking for how full the epaxial muscles are. I'm actually also looking for the belly. Some horses give me an idea how fit they are. If they have a big belly, or they don't have a belly at all. If they have good muscles in the epaxial muscles. Right here is the spine. So I'm going to also palpate on top of the spine. Some horses have back pain. Some horses are, have what we call kissing spines. I'm looking for that as well. Then I'm going to reach to the other side and lean towards me. And I'm actually gonna do this just for purpose of demonstration from this side. So I'm putting my fingers right here and I'm pulling towards me. I'm looking for indications of per pelvic pain, right? Whether it's sacroiliac or lumbosacral pain. Right here is the lumbosacral. So here we have the lumbosacral. Then I start looking for the flexibility of the lumbosacral area. So a horse should be able to do that. You see how it flex the lumbosacral. I can also do a little belly scratch. Make sure that the belly comes up and goes down. Now, if I do this and the horse starts kicking at me and being very upset, that is a sign of pain. Great, so these are the gluteals. Now over the gluteals, I'm gonna go towards all this hind leg. Be very careful, obviously, some horses will kick more than others. So safety first. One of the things I like to stay very close to the horse is because I can feel if the horse is gonna kick me or not kick me. Now right here is the stifle. The stifle has three ligaments. Medial, the medial patella ligament, the middle patella ligament, and the lateral patella ligament. I feel those ligaments and I feel between those ligaments. Then I go further back and I am actually going to look between the middle patella ligament and the collateral ligament. And I'm looking for joint effusion, also called inflammation or joint fluid. Now, since I'm at it and I'm already here, I look at his genitals. If he's a stallion, I actually look at his testicles. It's very important because sometimes a stallion can have testicular problems causing quote unquote lameness. So I keep coming, feeling all his muscles and his tibia. Some racehorses will have tibial stress fractures and you will once in a while feel the tibial issue, right? Then another thing that I do, I'm gonna turn around and I'm going to feel the calcaneus. Horses can get tap hot over here. Horses can get what we call a curb, which is a little bump right here, sometimes from the superficial detail flexor or some soft tissue areas over here. I'm gonna palpate the flexor tendon just like I did in the front. I'm gonna palpate the pastern. Same thing now for the front. I'm gonna palpate the cannon bone. I'm gonna palpate the branches of the suspensor. One in the outside, one in the inside. Now, I'm gonna palpate the pastern area. I'm gonna look at the feet. Then I'm going to pick up his leg. And I'm going to, with my fingers from the inside, I'm gonna go between the flexor tendons 
and then from, with my thumb I'm gonna go on the outside I'm gonna feel the splint bones when I have the leg flex I am going to feel between my superficial little flexor tendon and my dip I'm gonna go feel for the splint bone trying to look for suspensory ligament inflammation on the outside part I'm gonna feel for the splint bone right here right here with my thumb and my index finger I'm feeling for the suspensory branches and I also do what's called a passive passive flexion test looking for any signs of pain now I'm gonna test with the hoof tester the same thing that I did in the front uh, inside right here right so then I'm gonna grab the leg I'm gonna test make sure I don't touch the coronary band and I'm gonna press right here all right so now after we have checked the leg i'm gonna palpate musculature right so right here we're looking for his hamstrings there's two muscles over here the same my tendinosus the same my membranosus and i get especially in quarter horses and and heavy horses i look inside for how flexible these muscles feel because sometimes they can get something called fibrotic myopathy right I also check tail tone, very important. Some horses can have very weak tail due to neurologic problems can, that can also cause lameness. So tail tone and also anal tone. If a horse anus have a good tone, then neurologically it's doing good, right? Now I do the exact same thing on the other side. An important part of the lameness examination is neck flexibility. Horses can get neck arthritis or neck pain. And then we want, I like to do this with treats. And if they can follow the treat, so that's one. I want them to bring, I want to test how flexible, you see? I want them to test, to touch his shoulder. Oh, he got it from me. <laughs> he beat me. And another one is coming all the way back. All the way back, look at this, excellent. Very good boy, very good boy. And now we're gonna test the other side. So now we do the same thing to the other side. The neck is very important to go to both sides. Right here, testing, testing, yes, yes, yes. Come over here. There you go, there you go. That's, we want him to go as tight as possible. And now I ran out of treats, I think, to do the other one. Let's see if he'll come all the way. All the way back. Come in, buddy. Come on. Come on. This one sometimes can be a little bit of a tricky challenge, especially if you don't have treats. But I can give him a little help. You see what I did? I give him a little bit of help, then some encouragement. All right, good boy. All right, so that's about it for the passive lameness examination. Now, the next thing that we do is we're going to see the horse walking. We're gonna see the horse trotting. We're gonna see the horse going downhill, uphill, as much as we can. And then we're gonna see the horse going on a circle. Now the walking part of the lameness examination. What are we doing here? I want to see the horse walk away from me and towards me. I'm gonna look at his head, hip, back, legs. I'm looking for symmetry or asymmetry, meaning how are the legs moving? Are the legs lifting equally from the ground or not. So let's go start walking. So you can go faster. So I'm looking for how his hogs are placed, how his hip is placed. What is he doing with his tail? And I'm also looking at the musculature on his gluteal muscles and his hamstrings. Sometimes horses have neurologic problems or they can have lameness that's been going on for a very long time that don't let them develop good musculature. Coming towards us, I'm looking at the chest, I'm looking at the feet, how are the feet landing? What is he doing with his head? What is he doing with his forearm? All those things are what we're gonna evaluate. Now, we're gonna look up from the side. So now we're gonna see the horse walking from the side. We are looking at his legs, how he stretches the legs, basically, how far forward they go, how far back they go. 
how he lands his feet. I'm looking at his shoulders, looking at his gluteal area, looking at his back, how, is, how flexible his back is, how flexible his joints are, and how much are they dropping. I also look at the fetlock dropping, what we call the fetlock drop. Some horses will drop one leg more than the other. Now I want to see the horse trotting. And we see the horse trotting and looking for the same thing. Looking for a hip hike, looking for joint or like a fetlock drop, looking for asymmetry, things are, that are not equal. Looking for the movement of his head, how he forwards one leg versus the other one. And we're gonna look at two grounds. We're gonna look at hard surface and we're gonna look at soft surface. Now we are looking the same thing, but on a different surface. This time it's a soft surface. Some lanes will actually show different on a soft surface versus a hard surface. For example, if the horse has foot pain or laminitis, this horse will show a lot more lameness on the hard ground than on the soft ground. This is one of the advantages of doing a full lameness examination on both surfaces. So on the flexion examination, what we're doing is I'm gonna put pressure on, the, on certain joints. For example, when I do the lower limb, I'm gonna put uh, pressure on the fetlock, pattern, and coughing joint. Although it's a little bit more sensitive for the fetlock. Then I'm gonna do the carpus. Then I'm gonna do the upper limb. On the hind end, I'm gonna come and do the same thing. I am going to do upper limb flexion and I'm gonna do lower limb flexion. All right, so now I'm gonna demonstrate that in this horse. For the lower limb flexion, what I do is I lean a little bit into the horse my shoulder towards his elbow. I push him that way. You see how he's balancing that way a little bit, relieving the pressure from here. And then I grab his leg and 99% of the horses will give me his leg just fine. Now there are multiple ways that I can do this. I'm gonna demonstrate now. I'm pushing down. I'm not touching here the carpus. I'm actually just holding this joint and I'm putting my pressure with my right hand. And I'm going to flex this for about 30 seconds. And then when I'm about done, I'm gonna count from three to zero. And she's actually going to trot. And then I'm gonna evaluate if this actually made the horse lame or not. All right, we ready? So three, two, one. And then I'm gonna encourage him and I'm gonna let him go. And she's going to go. And now she's going to come back. I'm looking for head bob. I'm looking for muscle asymmetry. I'm looking for joint flexibility, fetlock drop, any of the lameness signs, which you can see actually in our webpage, performanceequinebs.com. All right, so now I'm gonna demonstrate how we do the carpal flexion. For the carpal flexion, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna lean into his elbow. He is going to find his balance. I'm gonna grab by the cannon bone and I am going to grab here by the cannon bone without putting pressure on this joint here or the fellow or the pastern. And I'm going to pull up parallel to the ground, parallel to the ground. You can see here how this joint is fully flexed. This is a very high motion joint. He's putting no resistance. Sometimes when horses have fractures or severe arthritis, they will put a lot of resistance over here. And here we're gonna do 30 to 45 seconds. Depends on the veterinarian and the horse. And it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna count from three to zero and the horse is gonna go. Three, two, one, go. We give him a little bit of encourage and here he go. We're looking for the exact same thing. We're looking for the hind end. I'm going to, I like to start with the upper limb Everybody have different preferences. You could do the lower limb. Now, look what I'm doing. I'm trying not to put pressure right here and I'm trying not to hold it like this because that would mean that I'm gonna put pressure on the lower limb as well. So I'm gonna hold it as close to the cannon bone as possible. And with my knees, not with my back, I'm pulling up. 
I'm putting pressure here. I'm putting pressure here. I'm also putting pressure on some of the hip joints. That's why we call this upper limb flexion. It's not specific for the hog. It's not specific for the stifle and it's not specific for the hip, but it is, it gives us an idea if the main, the main problem is in the upper part. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing anywhere between 30 seconds to 45 seconds. We're gonna count from three to zero. Three, two, one, zero, go. So now we're looking for a hip hike. We're also looking for a head bob. We're also looking for muscle tone on both hind legs and front legs. Sometimes horses can have front lameness that gets worse after we flex the hind. Sometimes we can have hind lameness and show front lame as well. So this is where the art of lameness examination comes into play a little bit. So that was the upper limb flexion. Now we're gonna do the lower limb flexion. Now we're gonna do the lower limb flexion of the hind leg. Very similar, safety. I stay close to the horse and I also go in this direction. I try to touch the horse on the outside, touch the horse on the inside. Not every horse is gonna be as nice as this horse. We will have horses that will kick, but it's very, very rare that a horse will kick me if I am standing on this position. So I'm gonna grab right here in this area and I'm going to, with my right hand, I'm going to flex the lower limb. You can see here how the fed look is flex, extension, flexion, extension, flexion, fell, pastern, and coffin joint. However, we have already talked about that is a lot more sensitive towards fell So if the horse has a fell problem, this will come positive. The trick is that if he has pastern or, jo or coffin joint, it will also come positive. That one we, that's why we call it lower limb flexion. All right, so we wait our 30 seconds. So we're gonna go three, two, one, and we let him go, and we go trotting. A little bit of encouragement, and here we go. We like to go all the way down the runway and all the way up. That way we have an idea if the lameness is actually getting worse as the horse keeps going, or it's getting better as the horse keeps going. Good. So, so far we have done lower limb flexion in the front, upper limb flexion in the front, lower limb flexion in the hind end, upper limb flexion in the hind end. Now I'm gonna show you some, what I call more specialty flexions. These are not common on the everyday lameness examination, but you might see me or your veterinarian doing them. So now, now we're going to manipulate the shoulder and the elbow. So there are two of them. Okay, now you see how I'm directing the horse with my, elbow, with my shoulder and he's gonna find his balance and I am going to pull forward. The horse is gonna stretch, that's perfectly fine. He's gonna lower his nose and that's a really good sign of neck flexibility. Some horses with bad neck cannot do what he's doing right now, all right? So this is perfectly good behavior. He's stretching, I'm gonna pull a little bit. We're gonna wait 45 seconds to a minute. The horse is very comfortable, and we're gonna go from three to zero, the same thing. So we're gonna go three, two, one, zero, and go. So as you can see, the pattern is always the same, and we are looking for the same signs. What we're doing with the flexions is looking which joint, which genital area is making this horse worse. Nowadays, we have another tools that we'll talk about in other videos called the lameness locator. And with the lameness locator, it helps us out to actually not just give him a, a visual idea, but we can give him an objective idea of how bad the lameness is and if it's getting worse or not. Right now, without the lameness locator, I'm just, I'm giving you my opinion as a veterinarian. But when we put the lameness locator, the machine, it actually can give us a number, which is kind of cool. This is something new that we've been doing for the last couple of years. So now another upper limb manipulation is pulling back on the shoulder right here. 
you see? This is not done on the everyday examination. However, it is a tool that you might see your veterinarian use. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. We pull back the shoulder. We like that. You see what he's doing? He's pulling me. That's very good, actually, that he pulls me. He is resistant. This doesn't feel natural. He doesn't have enough pain to prevent him from pulling. So we're gonna count this again from three to zero. Three, two, one, and go. Now, this is not a very common manipulation, not a very common flexion or extension, right? And as you can see, some horses might not really like it. So we go through the same procedure. We pull gut back, we do the flexion, and we do the extension. And we're gonna go three, two, one, and we let him roll. Now, another uncommon flexion that you might see, I say uncommon, is that the veterinarian can come and bring the opposite leg towards the side right here and put pressure on the upper limb without putting pressure on the lower limb. We go through the same drill and we are, in this case, very similar to the previous upper limb flexions of the hind end. We're putting pressure here um, on the asymmetrical pressure on the hock, on the stifle, on the hip. What do I mean asymmetrical? Just on some tendons, excuse me, just on some ligaments of the joint. All right, and we go to the same drill. We're gonna do three, two, one, and go. Lastly, you will hear once in a while how your veterinarian is flexing the stifle. It's not a, not a very specific, but we try to make it as specific as possible. So I am going to grab the leg. I'm going to grab the leg right here. I'm gonna try not to put pressure on the hook. You see the hook, I'm not touching it. And I'm gonna pull it up. Ideally, I'm trying to isolate here more the lameness towards the stifle area, All right? So I'm gonna hold it again, 45 seconds to a minute. And I'm going to go through the same cycle. Three, two, one, go. The circle is a very important part of the examination because it tells us what the horse is feeling when it's turning. So it's putting more pressure on different areas of the horse and putting tension on different areas. So it's not an asymmetrical loading. I know I probably gave you a bunch of uh, scientific terms over there, but basically the horse is stepping on a different angle on his tendons and joints. So we want to see the, the horse in the circle trotting and we're looking for the same, same signs. Fedlock drop, head bob, hip hike. We're looking for the shoulder muscles, and then we're gonna go into the canter. And we're looking for the canter. You see how he started cantering without a problem. And now we are going to look how comfortable he does this, the back flexibility, looking at the pelvis, how he brings that pelvis down, how he pushes with his hind end, and the same thing in the front end. And then we're gonna tell him to stop, and we're gonna turn around. We're going to evaluate how he stops. Does he stop comfortable, uncomfortable? Does he, does he trip or doesn't trip? And now we're going to go on a trot. The reason we use the trot first is because the trot is an asymmetrical gait. If you slow down this video, you're going to see that the left front and the right hind are quite synchronized, right? And then the right front and the left hind are synchronized. They are touching the ground at the same time at the same time. So that's, that is called a trot. Very symmetrical gait. And if you're gonna measure asymmetry, meaning if you're gonna look for things that are not symmetrical or not the same, then you need to evaluate at a symmetrical gait, All right? So now we're gonna go into the canter. Now canter into the left. And some of the, of the notes that we take is, hey, is this horse lame towards the left? Is he lame towards the right? 
Does he want to canter easier to the left? You see right now he's actually putting a little bit of resistance on this cantering. So while she is encouraging him, I keep looking for signs. I keep looking how he starts. How is he gonna push? Is he gonna maintain the canter? Is he gonna maintain something that we call the lead? We're not gonna talk into the lead right now, but you can study about lead and lead changes and how some horses that are lame might not wanna do lip changes, might not wanna keep the canter going. So for the purpose of this particular video, we are going to stop, we're gonna bring the horse in, and that will be the end of our examination. If you like this video, make sure you share it. You can also subscribe to our email list in our webpage, performanceequinebs.com. And if you want to learn more as a technician or as a veterinary assistant, you can also visit our teaching webpage, which is Rulan University. So you can go to rulanuniversity.com. That's Rulan, R-U-L-L-A-N, university.com. We actually offer classes for veterinary assistants if you want to learn more about horse veterinary assistants. If you like this video, if you want to learn more, make sure you, you like it, make sure you share it with your friends. If you need an examination, feel free to call us, 352-307-3690. We'll make an appointment. We're glad to see you.